is going on Solo fam? My name is John Solo and welcome to another episode of Messed Up Origins, the show that ruins all of your favorite childhood movies by breaking down the truly messed up stories that inspired them. I mean, sometimes we ruin them. Personally, I think it makes them more interesting. Today we're covering a book that you guys have requested countless times since the series started, The Fox and the Hound. The novel was published on September 11th, 1967 and was written by Daniel P. Mannix. This is one of those stories where as soon as I started the research process, I wished I looked into it months ago. It is truly the embodiment of what this series is all about. It starts out pretty happy, life is at the very least okay for everyone involved, but when things start to go wrong, they continue in that same direction and gain momentum. Basically, things go from bad to worse to worse to worse to worse. Enough talking about it though, I'm sure you guys want to dive into the story, so we're going to do just that right after we go over the Disney adaptation for those who haven't seen it in a while. As always, if you like what I do here on the channel and you want to show your support, you can smash that like button to help us reach our goal of 3,000 likes and keep the solo fam strong. Fox and the Hound follows a red fox named Todd after he's orphaned by a hunter who killed his mother. He's adopted by an old lady farmer and soon after her neighbor, the hunter Amos Slade, brings home a coon hound puppy named Copper who he plans on training to be a hunting dog. Despite the obvious differences in their nature, Copper and Todd get along really well and vow to stay friends forever. But complications arise when Amos gets frustrated at Copper for constantly wandering off to play and Todd makes an enemy out of Amos's older hunting dog, Chief. That winter, Amos takes Copper on a hunting trip to train him how to be a good hunting dog and when he comes back, he finds himself at odds with the nature of he and Todd's relationship. After another run-in with Amos and Chief that ends with Chief getting hit by a train and barely surviving, the hunter has finally had it with the fox's antics and he vows to Farmer Tweed that he's going to kill him. This leaves Tweed with no other option but to return Todd to the wild, which at first is a miserable experience. But thanks to Big Mama, he meets a pretty young vixen named Vixie and life in the wild is looking pretty appealing. That is until Amos and Copper decide to trespass on the forest preserve, track down him and Vixie, and try with every fiber of their being to kill them in the most inhumane way possible. Somehow, Todd and Vixie he managed to repeatedly outfox Amos and Copper until out of nowhere a bear bursts through the trees and attacks them. Despite the issues they had with each other, Todd chooses to risk his life to save Copper and Amos by distracting the bear before it could give the killing blow. This ends up causing him serious injury and puts him at the mercy of his former best friend and his master, but when the time comes for Amos to pull the trigger, Copper stands over Todd to protect him. Amos can't help but give in when he accepts that he would be dead if it weren't for Todd's help and he leaves him to continue his life in the wild as he recovers from the attack with the help of his dogs and Widow Tweed. That was a pretty good story, right? There were some intense moments, but nothing too dark for a little kid to handle. The same cannot be said about the book. I think any child who reads it would be at least a little traumatized, especially one who likes animals. I'm not trying to overhype it either. We'll start the story now and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. So right off the bat, one change that Disney made for the movie was they switched the names of Copper and Chief. In the book, the old dog is named Copper and the puppy is named Chief. For the sake of avoiding confusion and making it easier to draw comparisons, I'm just going to call them by the names they have in the movie because that's how most people would identify those characters anyways. So the old dog, Chief, doesn't like Copper from the very start. He used to be the master's favorite hunting dog and the leader of the pack, so Copper has got him feeling a little insecure. To make it worse, on one of their hunting trips, they're attacked by a bear and Chief is too afraid to confront the animal while Copper is brave enough to protect his master, solidifying his number one spot. Meanwhile, somewhere else in town, a female hunter adopts a baby red fox and names him Todd after killing his mother and his siblings. So in the book, it's not a random hunter who made Todd an orphan, but the woman who adopts him. Similar to the movie, she's only able to keep him for about a year, but it's not because the master wants to kill him. It's because he's reaching sexual maturity and has to meet some ladies. Also, it's not really a tearjerker moment like it is in the movie because the hunter lady expected she would have to do it anyways. After getting accustomed to his life in the wild, Todd starts to really enjoy it. He's establishing his territory and learning new evasion techniques from being chased by hunting dogs. One day while exploring, he stumbles upon the master's house and finds Copper and Chief chained up in the yard. This is the first time he's seeing either of them, so unlike the movie where he met them when he was just a kit, he didn't meet them this time until about a year into his life. He then discovers that by approaching the fence, he can send both dogs into a barking frenzy, so he starts to taunt them every so often just for fun. But eventually he 
pushes them just a little too far and Copper breaks off his chain and chases them. Here's where the book starts to get dark and I guarantee you won't guess what happens next. Copper is chasing Todd through the woods and the master takes Chief and is on hot pursuit of them both. Todd then leads Copper onto the railroad tracks while the train is barreling towards them and he deliberately waits until the last second to jump off so the train hits Copper and kills him. So it's actually pretty similar to what happens to Chief in the movie, only he lives through it. So yeah, Todd kills Copper in the book. Can you believe it? And we're not even close to done. After witnessing his favorite dog essentially get murdered, the master swears revenge. He trains Chief to ignore all other foxes except for Todd, and the rest of the book follows the chase, or the hunt rather, between man, dog, and fox. Over time, the master tries over a dozen different hunting techniques and attempts to kill Todd. Similar to what we saw in the movie during the final hunt, with Todd always escaping in the end. During this time, he mates with an older, experienced lady fox who gives birth to a litter of kits. Only he doesn't get to raise them because the master tracks down his den and gasses the kits to death. I told you things were gonna get worse. Now brace yourself. That winter, the master lays out leg traps all around Todd's territory, but because he's smart, he learns how to trigger them without getting caught. His old lady, not so much. She gets caught and killed. Todd moves on pretty quickly though and soon takes on a new younger mate and has a litter of kits with her too. I think the character Vixie is supposed to be a mix of both of Todd's mates in the book because she's shown to have more experience surviving in the wild than he does, but she's obviously pretty young. Handsome. Oh, say, gee, uh, this sure sounds nice. Sadly, their relationship doesn't last very long either thanks to the master and his quest for revenge. He uses a still hunting technique where he stands very still and plays a rabbit call while in fox territory. This lures out the foxes in the area, including Todd's kits, and the master kills them. He then uses a wounded kits call to lure out Todd's mate and kill her too. As time passes, the country area that makes up the book's setting starts to evolve and urbanize. The farmlands and wildlands are both being bought out, forcing both the farmers and animals alike to find new homes. Todd is one of the few foxes that stays behind as he's only ever lived in that territory and has no desire to move. But the rest of the foxes that decide to stick around become real sickly scavenger type characters and their life bonds with their mates are replaced by promiscuity. In other words, instead of mating for life, the foxes are banging each other and then go on their separate ways. I don't think this is supposed to be the hand gesture I use, but you get my point. I'm sure this is supposed to be some kind of metaphor for how times were changing in the 1960s and how people started to question cultural norms and the status quo. And the older folks of that generation generally saw that change as being for the worse. While all this evolution is happening, there remains one constant, the master's hatred for Todd. And there comes a point in his life after he's lost most of his land and all of his friends have either died off or moved away that the winter hunt is all he has left to look forward to. Pretty sad life. He spends most of his free time alone, drinking alcohol, hanging out with chief and people in town start trying to convince him to move into a nursing home where dogs aren't allowed. One summer there's an outbreak of rabies that spreads through the fox population and after a group of children is attacked by an infected fox, the town residents ask the master to hunt them all down using the techniques that he knows. At first he lays out a bunch of poison which is a pretty typical strategy used when wanting to kill a large group of a certain species. Like coyotes for example, I'm pretty sure I've read that about coyotes. But domesticated animals end up being susceptible to the poison too, and at one point, a neighborhood kid is killed after he eats some. This causes the town to freak out over the poison, which is understandable, so they adopt a new strategy. A few dozen folks take up their guns, walk into a forest in a straight line, try to flush out as many foxes as possible, and blast them into oblivion. Somehow, Todd manages to escape all the attempts to kill him and the rest of his fox brethren, but at this point, he's starting to age and not exactly capable of what he used to be. The morning after an unsuccessful attempt, at trying to chase him down with some greyhounds, he sends out Chief with his scent. He eventually finds him and chases him all throughout the day and into the next morning until finally Todd collapses from exhaustion and dies. And then Chief, who's close to death himself, collapses on top of him. The master nurses Chief back to health and the two pals are the town heroes for the next few months, but after a while the hype dies down and the master goes back to spending his time alone drinking. And once again, the concerned residents start suggesting he move into a nursing home and this time he agrees. And in one of the most depressing endings you ever could have thought up, the master takes his shotgun off the wall and while crying, leads Chief outside, gives him a few gentle pats on the head, and tells him to lie down. He covers the dog's eyes while he trustingly licks his hand 
And then... And that was the incredibly messed up story that inspired Disney's The Fox and the Hound. What'd you think? It blows my mind that Disney would take this pretty brutal book that details some of the harsher elements of hunting life and farm living and turn it into a kid's movie. After 26 episodes of doing this, I probably shouldn't be surprised, but somehow I am. Seriously though, what did you guys think of this book? Was it as dark as you expected it to be? For those more familiar with the novel, did I do a good job summarizing it? Leave your thoughts in the comments down below. I'm always lurking in the comment section looking for feedback, so the more I get, the better. If you like this episode and what I do here on the channel, make sure to to smash that like button with all your heart to help us reach our goal of 3,000 likes and subscribe and turn notifications on so you never miss another episode. As always, the best way to stay updated on Disney news and what content I'm working on next is to follow me on social media. That's Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and links can be found in the description. I'll be seeing you guys next week with even more messed up content. Until then, my name is John Solo, and remember, John shot first.